Pastor. Everybody praise the Lord. Another in no go hallelujah. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you tonight and bless your name. This final day, you finalize every problem in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. We're finishing tonight. And we ask that, Lord, everything that ought to be done, tonight it is finished. Amen. Here at the Alpha location with your people. And everywhere online, Lord, I pray, finality tonight. Amen. Completion tonight. Amen. Fulfillment tonight in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. You will give another amen before you sit down. Amen. I love and no go amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, we're looking at something simple but very profound. We're looking at something common but still not well known. We're looking at the word in the mouth of everyone and yet it needs to be registered on the heart the word is christian christian can you pronounce that word for me christian. the christian this day until that day the two days there this day that day this day of living here in the grace of God, in the love of God, in the strength of the Lord. This day, there is that day. The Paul, the apostle said, he will give me the crown. And to everyone that loves the Lord on that day. You need to connect the two together. What happens this day determines what happens on that day. The topic, the Christian, this day until that day. We're looking at Acts chapter 26, and I'm reading from verse 27. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? He didn't allow him to give any answer. He said, I know thou believest. I know, King. I know, President, I know, Senator, I know, Leader, I know, Director, I know, Thou believest, because you live by what you believe. If you believe, you are small, you are inconsequential, you are powerless, if you believe that you, of all people, there's nothing you can achieve in life, you live by what you believe. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, if you believe he is Savior, if you believe he is Redeemer, if you believe he finishes every problem in your life, you live by who you believe. I know that thou believest. Now, what Paul says about Agrippa is one thing. What Agrippa says about himself is the real thing. What I say about you is one thing. What you say by yourself, for yourself, what you say in yourself, that is the real thing. Look at verse 28. In verse 20, then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. You see what Paul had said. I know thou believest. I know you are a believer. Agrippa said, not yet. Almost 
that persuades me to be a Christian. Do you know there are people who say they are Christians, but they are almost a Christian? Not all together. Look at verse 29. In verse 29, then Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day, this day, this day, that all that hear me this day will were both almost and all together. Agrippa, my friend there, son, daughter, acquaintance there, crusade, participants there, I would to God that you are not only almost a Christian, but all together a Christian. Then he says, such as I am. He said, and Paul, I got converted. And Paul, I became honest. And Paul, I became righteous through the Lord. I am Paul, no more injurious, innocent in the Lord. I am Paul. I am saved. I am Paul. I am transformed. I am Paul. And because of that, I am indwelt by Christ. I am Paul. I'm now separated from the world. I am Paul. I am now an ambassador for Christ. I am Paul now. I am new in Christ. Now I'm a Christian. And I'm not just almost a Christian. I am all together a Christian, and I would to God that King Agrippa, director there, leader there, bishop there, pastor there, priest there, I pray that everyone, including the King Agrippa, will be as I am, not only almost, but all together. A Christian in Second Timothy chapter four. I'm reading there from verse eight. Second Timothy chapter four, verse eight. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, which the Lord, the righteous judge shall give me at that day. That day. That day. What happens today, this day, and continues in your life until the final day? It is this day that leads to, that culminates in, that helps you and determines what happens that day. That's why we're talking about the Christian. This day, until that day it'll give you the crown Amen. i said you'll wear the crown Amen. but it is what happens this day that determines what you have that day look we're looking at three things here number one the almost christian until this day paul appeared before agrippa and everything he had known when he started his uh, message to King Agrippa and to all the people that were there, he said, I know, you know all the things in the land of Israel. You know our religion, you know our tradition, you know everything. And as he comes to a conclusion, Agrippa said, almost, I'm a Christian, almost. I'm a Christian, the almost Christian until this day. Number two, the actual Christian in his day. Christ came. And as Christ came, he came to make the final sacrifice, to lead every sinner to salvation. And in his day, the people that came and they received him, they received the grace to become actual Christians. Not almost, 
The cross is there. Calvary is there. The sacrifice had been made. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And in his day, the day of his power, the day of his grace, the day of his love, the day of his sacrifice, we have the actual Christian in his day. Number three here is the altogether Christian until that day. That final day, my brother, my sister, that, that's what matters. Final day. In that day, anybody can call any other person, brother, 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 whatever name, whatever title they give you, in that day that will show. Anybody can say he is my pastor. He's a great preacher. Nice. But you know, it's that day that will reveal where you stand, how you stand, and what you stand for, the altogether Christian until that day. Let's come to number one here. The number one thing here is the almost Christian until this day. Until this day. And look at that again in Acts chapter 26, verse 28. Then Agrippa said, Unto Paul almost, almost, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Look at verse 29. In verse 29, and Paul said, I would to God, how I pray, how I desire, how I wish, in the sight of God, that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and all together such as I am, except or without these bonds. Well, the scripture tells us there are people, they're almost Christians. Not Christians yet, almost Christians. And you know that song was sing. That says almost persuaded now to believe, not, not believing yet, almost persuaded Christ to receive. He has not received, almost persuaded Christ to receive. Seem now some soul to save in their heart. As I look at the scriptures, as I look at the disciples of Christ. As I look at the demand of Christ, as I look at decision for Christ, I know I'm not there yet, but this day, they are not willing to make the decision. They say, go, spirit, go thy way. Some more convenient time on thee, I'll call. Why not now? Because you know, tomorrow, May be too late. You may not have the desire tomorrow, the passion to give yourself to Christ. You might not have it tomorrow. You might go on carelessly, carelessly, and then your life is lost. If there is any time to go away from being almost to being all together, it is this day now. Agree, but what do you mean by? almost a Christian. Paul the Apostle, what do you mean? I wish, I would to God, that everyone, both Agrippa and everyone hearing me, will not be almost a Christian, but all together a Christian who is an almost Christian. Second Kings chapter 17, verse 33. Second Kings chapter 17, but 33, they feared the Lord and served their own gods. Look at that. Look at the combination. First part of the sentence, they feared the Lord. They reverenced the Lord. 
They seek the honor the Lord. They seek the belief. They believe there is God. They believe there is one Lord, one Lord in heaven. They believe there is one creator. They give affirmation to that. They fear the Lord and uh, they serve their own gods after the manner of the uh, nations whom they had carried away from things. Look at verse 34. It says in verse 34, until this day. They've gone to church a lot of times, but until this day. They read the book of the Psalms, yet until this day. They bear a Christian name, Joseph, Stephen, Mary, Martha, yet until this day. They put the Bible under their pillow anytime they want to sleep, yet until this day. They observe Easter, they observe Christmas, yet until this day. They go to wash with what they call holy water. Drink holy water, yet until this day. They have anointed oil with which they rub themselves, yet until this day. Anytime they have a challenge, a problem, they call the name of Jesus, yet until this day, they do after their former manners. They do after their former manners. They dress after their former manners. They drink after their former manners. They womanize after their former manners. They womanize, manize. They chase after men after their former manners. They lie. They deceive. They hypocritical after their former manners. It tells us then, all these people, look at that, it says, they fear not the Lord. In the real sense, they fear not the Lord. They don't obey his commandments. They don't respect his law. They don't have a new life, a new principle by what they live. A new principle, no. It says neither to neither do they after their, after his statutes. And then it says, and after their ordinances, or after the law and the commandment which the Lord commanded. And it says, for well, the children and everyone, they do like they have always done, almost Christian. Christian in name, but not Christian in nature. Christian by religion, but not Christian by redemption. That's why the Lord is telling us, where do you stand? We're concluding the crusade you seek it tonight. Are you still until this day? You were here on the first day, second day, third day, fourth day, and the fifth day. Everything you have heard, what have you made use of? Until this day, they do after their former manners. Look at, at that in verse 41. In verse 41, it says, So these nations feared the Lord externally and served their graven images. You have a shrine in the corner of your room. You bow down to that. You have image, you have waistband, you have that thing you are hanging on your neck, and you say you're a Christian. No, almost a Christian. Sunday, Sunday Christian. But during the week, your life is as sinful, as evil, and the lives of all the people 
in the same market with you. They lie, you lie. They don't go to church, you go to church. But the same thing that you do, it says, until this day, they're still like that. They worship their images, both their children and their children's children. As did their fathers, so do they. Look at that, until this day that they're almost cursed. Second Timothy chapter 3. I'm looking at verse 5. In Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. They have a form of godliness. A form, and when you look at them because of the external shell of godliness, you think they are Christians. No, they deny the power thereof, the power to stand, the power to live right, the power to live straight, the power to honor the Lord by their character in the private, in the public. They do not have that power. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. From such, turn away. Turn away from being almost a Christian. Almost a believer. Almost a righteous, godly person. But it's not. It's not. The flesh is taking a toll on him. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 it says, Ever learning ever learning <laughs> you wonder uh, from a little child you may go into sunday school from a little child in fact you were born you were born in a christian home so to say ever learning daddy taught you about god mommy taught you about god in your school your teachers teach you about god and there is a fellowship they call it christian fellowship you go to fellowship and you're attending a school maybe secondary school and they say it's a christian school and you're learning everything yet ever learning have you learned about christ have you learned about salvation? Have you learned about the grace of God that turns our lives around? But the pity for the almost Christian is that they are ever learning and yet they are not able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning, ever learning. Almost a Christian today you'll transfer from almost to the actual Christian. Yeah. A good and no good, amen there. Yeah. We'll come to point number two here. Point number two, we're looking at the actual Christian in his day. In his day. You turn this day to his day. The day you meet Christ is day. The day you give your life to Christ is day. The day you become reasonable and you say, What happens if I die almost a Christian? He almost passed. That means he failed. He almost got well. That means he is not well. He almost got supply. That means he didn't get the supply. He almost got surplus. That means he didn't have surplus. He almost was upright. That means he wasn't upright. A person that is almost, almost, almost will not make it but we're talking of the actual christian in his day and you see that song i read to you stanza two tells us almost persuaded come come today it is when you come you come to christ you make this day his day almost persuaded turn not away don't turn away come to the lord and come today jesus 
invites you here and it is his day the day of salvation the day of repentance the day of your redemption it says angels are kind of lingering near the angels they want to rejoice because of one soul that comes into the kingdom prayers rise from heart so dear O wanderer, O sinner, come and make this day the day you become the actual Christian. And look at Acts chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 26. Acts 11, verse 26. And when he, Barabbas, had found him Saul, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people and the disciples, underline that word, and the disciples and the disciples were called Christians. First, in Antioch, the disciples were called Christians. First in Antioch, they became disciples of Christ. And those disciples, only the disciples were called Christians. Those are the actual Christians. Disciples who are disciples, those who have decided for Christ the Savior. Have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. No turning back. The world behind me. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me. No turning back. No turning back. No friends forsake me. Yet I will follow. No turning back. No turning back. Those people, the day you decide, I receive Jesus as my Savior. I turn from my sin. I turn to the Savior. I'm decided for Christ the Savior. Those are the disciples too. The disciples are the people that deny self. That's what Jesus said. He looked at the people that followed him and he said, if anyone follows me, let him deny himself and bear his cross and follow me. Disciples are the people that deny self. Disciples, number three, are the people that are described and devoted as sons. It says, those who receive him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Even those that believe on his name, they are devoted to him as a good son is devoted to the father. Those are the sons, Romans tells us. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He said, no. How shall we who are dead to sin live any longer therein? The people who are dead to sin, the sins of the past will knock at their door again. They say, no, I don't have any feeling for that anymore. I don't have any desire for that anymore. They are dead to sin. Those are the disciples, not the people that are still active in sin, alive in sin, and doing whatever in sin. Disciples are the people who have decided for Christ the Savior. Disciples are the people who deny self. Disciples are people who are dead to sin. Disciples are those who are devoted as sons. Disciples are those who are directed by the Spirit. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. When you are led by the Spirit of God, when Satan no more controls you, and when society doesn't have a total authority over your life anymore, those are the disciples. The disciples are those who have departed from the world of sensuality. Disciples, they have departed from the world 
or sexuality because it says be ye separate says the lord you separate yourself from all those things of the world it says here adulterers and adulteresses don't you know that the french of the world is the en is the enemy of god that's why it says love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man any woman love the world the sensuality of the world is not of him disciples are those who have departed from the sensualities the world of sensuality disciples are the people that are delivered from the kingdom of satan he has delivered us and translated us out of the kingdom of darkness unto the kingdom of his dear son you depart and you you destroy all the covenants you had with Satan, with the devil. Those are the disciples and were told, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. That's how we become Christians. Look at Acts chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 37. Acts chapter 2, verse 37. It says, Now when they heard this, they were preached in their hearts. They heard that although they were religious, although they were traditional, although they were kind having a form of godliness, but they denied the power thereof. When they heard that, it struck them in their heart. They were convicted in their heart. They were pricked in their heart and they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Look at verse 38. In verse 38, then Peter said unto them, repent. Repent. All those things you see, you be in you because you go to church uh, Easter time, Christmas time, harvest time, and because you do this and that you were thinking uh, you were a Christian. No, you are not. You are almost a Christian. But now you hear the word of God and you say, Look at this. What I thought I was, I am not. What do I do now? He says, Repent. You repent today. I said you repent today and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission, for the forgiveness, for the cleansing, for the washing away of sins. And then it says, and ye shall receive the gift, the grace of the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 39. In verse 39, for the promise is unto you. Nobody will be denied of that salvation when you come. You want to stop being almost, you want to be an actual Christian, a Bible believing Christian, a life that is transformed, and your life has been given to Christ. You'll not be denied. The promise is unto you. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved that the promise the promise is unto you and to your children and to them to all that are far off even as many as the Lord our God shall call look at verse 40 in verse 40 and with many other words many other words did he testify and exhort saying save yourselves from this unto what generation you know he told them generally repent that's a general general word but now he specified and he said save yourself from this unto what generation what's unto what generation a gang of thieves that's an unto what generation save yourself from there come out of there a gang of uh, you know a group of prostitutes prostitution that's unto what generation you want to be saved save yourself from this unto what generation and uh, you know the group of people that use their pen to change the receipt and to steal money unto what generation save yourself from this Unto what generation? Cyber crime. You know, you are there. You can stay here and, uh, you know, dupe uh, banks and all that. 
save yourself from that unto what generation the evil you've been doing it says repent and come out up there then in verse 41 it says then they that gladly receive the word wonderful somebody say wonderful before I tell you what's wonderful I said say wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> you know Peter was quite direct confrontational and he said you killed the prince of life he said you are guilty he said your religion has not brought righteousness in your life he said you're in the midst of an untoward generation come on save yourself rescue yourself repent come out they didn't get angry <laughs> you see look at him the way he's talking i thought he'll just say god bless you I thought you'll know, see everybody, no matter what you do, no matter what you're doing, no matter in what pitch you are, God loves everyone. No, he's angry with the sinner every day. He's angry with the people who are speaking on Christ on the cross. He's angry with people who are treading on Christ again after Christ has done so much. And you still trample him, and you bring him under your feet. No, he says you must repent. And the people they gladly received his word. They were baptized, and the same, the same day, the same day, your conversion has come. This new day, your new life begins in Jesus' name. There were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Look at verse 42. In verse 42, and they continued steadfastly. They, those are actual Christians. The people that come to the crusade field, raise up your hand, they raise up your, their hands. What's your name? They put their name. What's your number? They put their number. And you know everything, all the details are there. And now, after we finish and we round up, we call them. Hello. Is that so and so? Yes, I am. Who are you? I'm, you know, the, one of the people that wrote your name at the crusade. Oh, crusade. Crusade is over. I don't want to continue in that kind of thing. I came for miracle and praise the Lord. I got miracle, I got healing. Don't call me again, I'll block you. Now those people, those are not actual Christians. Those are bread and butter, uh, you know, bench warmers, crusade attendees. But the people, these are actual Christians. You'll be an actual Christian. It says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. And it says, and in fellowship. And it says, in breaking of bread and in prayers. New life has come to you. New life has come to me. Look at First Peter chapter 4, verse 15. First Peter chapter 4. Verse 15, it says, But let none of you suffer as a murderer. Let none of you suffer as a murderer. If you're in the gang before, and now you have come, you say you have repented, you have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you're a disciple of Jesus Christ. You have decided for Christ the Savior. You are devoted to him as a son. You are dead to sin. You deny self. You are directed by the Spirit of God. And you have departed from the world of sensuality. And you are, de you are delivered from the kingdom of Satan. If that has happened to you, that the actual Christian. And it says, from now, let none of you suffer as a murderer 
or succeed or as an evil doer or as a busy body in other men's matters. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, yet if any man suffer as a Christian, if any man suffer, suffer persecution, suffer ridicule, suffer reproach, if anyone suffer as a Christian, that means this Christian in verse 16 is the opposite of the people in verse 15. The murderer, the thief, the evil doer, the busybody. No. We come from verse 15, we come to verse 16. If any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. But let him glorify God in this behalf. You will glorify God. Your new life will glorify God. Your new personality, position, your new standing will glorify God in Jesus' name. I will glorify God. Let your light so shine before men. You're no more in darkness, a disciple. It's no more in darkness. A Christian, real, actual Christian, is no more in darkness. So let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. We're coming to point number three. Point number three is the altogether Christian until that day the all together christian until that day acts chapter 26 we're reading from verse 28 then agrippa said unto paul almost almost that persuades me to be a christian verse 29 he says that there and paul said I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were not only almost, but you are both almost and altogether such as I am, except these bonds. What does that mean, except these bonds? Paul the Apostle was chained for suffering persecution. He was saying, don't be afraid that we are going to suffer the same boss, the same chain. I'm an apostle. You are becoming an ambassador of Christ. And you are going to become a Christian. The minister may have some peculiar challenges and persecution. The members don't need to have all that. He said, accept these bonds. He said, but in your heart you can be altogether a christian in your mind having the mind of christ you can be altogether a christian in your behavior in your character you can become altogether a christian in your relationship man to a woman woman to a man in your relationship you can be altogether a Christian without any dirty sin going across from one to the other. As a person that has totally given yourself to the Lord, you become altogether a Christian. That's what will happen to you in Jesus' name. He said, a Christian like I am. What does that mean? He tells us in, in Galatians chapter 1, and I'm reading there from verse 14. Galatians chapter 1, reading from verse 14. It says, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals above many my equals in my own nation uh, he was saying uh, when i wasn't a real actual christian when i wasn't altogether a christian i was in religion 
and I profited quite a lot above many my equals. I could do, I could persecute, I could injure, I could go places that no that they were not courageous enough to go there. And I got profit. Maybe you are in a group, you are in a gang, and you have some profits there. Maybe you are in a particular profession and you had some profit there, but now you become an actual Christian, an altogether Christian, and all the bribes you used to take, no, I cannot touch that anymore. And all the things you used to do, I cannot do that anymore. How are you going to live? Now you say you're a Christian. Is your salary enough? Well, God will add to it. Why don't you take this bribe? I can't do that anymore. I used to have that kind of profit when I was just a church goer. I was just a bench warmer. I was just an almost Christian. But now, an actual Christian, and all together a Christian, I leave all those things alone. You leave them alone in Jesus' name. Yeah. Uh, but he said, it was a profit to him, being, he says, more exceedingly zealous. And then he says that it was in the tradition of his father. But look at verse 15. In verse 15, it says, But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb, and then he goes on, he says, and called me by his grace. He's been in religion, but the day came, the Lord called him by his grace. He's been in the tradition of the fathers, but the day came, the Lord called him by his grace. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, to reveal his son in me. To reveal his son in me. To reveal, he revealed him to me as my savior. He revealed him to me as my substitute. He took all my sins away. He revealed him to me as the final sacrifice. He revealed him to me as my sufficiency. Now he is sufficient for me. And when he pleased the Lord to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen immediately. You know, it wasn't daily darling, it wasn't delaying. I'll think about it some more convenient time. I'll call on you. No, this is the time, the convenient time, the conversion time. This is the time, the time of total change from almost to being altogether. A Christian, he said, immediately, I confide not with flesh and blood. This is your day. I said, this is your day. You remember the stanza three of the song I was reading, reading to you, almost persuaded, harvest is past. Crusades will not continue forever and ever. And you have your chance today because the harvest will soon pass. Almost persuaded, doom comes at last. Doom comes at last if you do not take your time now make up your mind now come to christ now become a disciple become a christian now born again christian if you don't do it now the harvest will sometimes almost cannot avail almost cannot avail i'm almost there but i'll go back home I still want to have the flesh. I still want to drink a little. I still want to smoke a little. Almost cannot avail. Almost is but to fail. Sad, sad, that bitter wail. Almost, but lost. Almost, but lost. I will not be lost. I will not be lost. 
You're not being lost in G Galatians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 18. Galatians chapter 2. We're looking at verse 18. For if I build again the things which I once destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. You give your life to the Lord here. You forsake all those things here. You mention those things by name. Lord, I come out of that, out of that, out of that. I come to Christ as my personal Savior now. All those things you have taken away from your life, destroyed from your life. If I build again the things which I once destroyed, which I told the Lord, Lord, just forgive me. No more of that thing. No more of that place. No more of the night club. No more of the foolish, filthy life. But now, I surrender completely. But if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, verse 20 tells us, it says, I am crucified with Christ. I am. I am. The day I met him, I said, Lord, I identify with you. You were crucified for me, and now I identify with you. I am crucified with Christ. And for the rest of his life, he remained identified with Christ. He didn't go back. You will not go back. He says, nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. New life. New life for you. I said new life for you. The Lord tonight sets you free. And as you surrender completely to the Lord and you become a disciple and the disciples were called Christians. First in until it sets you free, you remain free. I remain free. John chapter 8, we're looking at verse 12. In John chapter 8, verse 12, it says, Then speak Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me, not only to follow yesterday, to follow the other day, he that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Today, you have the light of life. Bastachi, in Bastachi, as he spake these words, many believed. On him, verse 31, in verse 31, then said Jesus to the Jews, which believed on him, if ye continue in my word. Those are the Christians. If ye continue in my word. Those are actual, altogether Christians. If ye continue in my word, then... Are ye my disciples? Remember, if the disciples that are called Christians. Are ye my disciples indeed? You decide for Christ, the Savior, that's the disciple. You are devoted to Him as Son, that's the disciple. You are dead to sin, the disciple. You deny self, that is the disciple you are directed by the spirit that is the disciple you are also and uh, now departed you depart from the world of sensuality that's the disciple and now 
you also are completely delivered from the kingdom of Satan, from any covenant with Satan. Then are ye my disciples indeed. And in verse 32, verse 32, and ye shall know the truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Thank God tonight is your night. Uh, look at look at verse 36 there. If the Son therefore shall make you free. Make you free. Tonight, make you free. Amen. Free from sin. I'm free from sickness. I'm free from suffering here and hereafter. Christ is here tonight. It will make you free. And ye shall be free indeed. Your time to be free has now come. My time to be free has now come. It will make you free and free indeed. It's bowed and eyes closed. You've been almost a Christian. Go to church. Have the Bible. Put the Bible under your pillow. Your bath or what they call holy water. You have anointed oil and you rub yourself. All that. Almost a Christian. But now. You repent of your sin. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive you, to set you free, to make a definite change in your life. Wherever you are, to become an actual Christian, to become a real believer, and to become an altogether Christian, wherever you are, you raise up your hand. Raise up your hand wherever you are. You stand up. You see, I declare for Jesus my Savior. I decide, I've decided to follow Jesus. The turning back, the turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. No friends or foes oppose me, yet I will follow. No turning back. No turning back. God is preparing a kingdom. I will be there. No turning back. No turning back. You're making up your mind. You're deciding for Christ. And you're saying, yes, Lord, here am I. Raise up that hand and stand up wherever you are. And say, Lord, I'm not going to gamble with my life. I'm not going to continue in all those things that will mark me down. As almost a Christian, I want to be an actual Christian, altogether Christian. That's why you're raising up your hand. That's why you're standing up. As you're raising up your hand and standing up, I'm going to pray with you now. And God will answer our prayer together. Did I hear an amen over there? You want to be a real, actual, altogether Christian. I want you, and if two of us shall agree as touching anything, we we'll ask him, he will do it for us. This is your time. Uh, write your name in the book of life. That's an actual Christian there. That's altogether Christian there. We're praying our Father in the mighty name of Jesus. We well, thank you for this hour that you give us the chance. You call us. By your word, you call us by your love, you call us by your grace, and your people have responded. I pray, Lord, you convert them, you change them, you transform them, and make them free and forgive them tonight in Jesus' name. Change the title from almost a Christian to altogether. A Christian. Let your peace come to them. Let the freedom come to them. Let the joy of salvation come to them now in Jesus' name. And the grace to go and live an upright life grant unto them right now. 
Thank you, Lord, for the answer. We know you have answered. We know their names are now in the book of life. We know their hearts have now been changed and transformed. And now they have become real, actual, altogether Christians, children of God. Confirm it to Lord in their heart. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Keep on standing. Our counselors, members of the choir, ushers, and uh, you know the brethren, the counselors are there. They will, you know, take the details so that you will continue in the apostles' doctrine and uh, in fellowship and in breaking of bread and prayers. Counselors, God bless you. Uh, please do your work thoroughly. Let's have all those names and uh, I'll be shaking over here tonight. Well, come and lead us this session. Counselors, please get to them. Get to them and ensure Counselors, get to them and take their names. And those who are sitting, maybe you didn't give your life, why not begin to pray and say, Lord, help me to remain an altogether Christian, actual Christian. Why not begin to pray and consecrate yourself more and more? That in the day, in the night, you will remain a believer, a real child of God, ready for his coming. Counselors get to them. And wherever you are, if counselors have not come to you, please indicate and call their attention. And for those who gave their lives to the Lord online, you decided this night to give your life to the Lord online please visit the link under your device and click the link gckheadquarter.org slash connect below your prayer and fill the form and submit so that we can help you to remain all together a Christian, actual Christian, tell the Lord to help you so that now that you have decided to be an actual Christian, you will not go back. You will not stop halfway. You will remain faithful to the Lord. And for those who listen to us over the radio, or you watched through the television, please, you can send your name and your details if you made it some for the Lord to this number that I'm going to call to you. Send SMS or WhatsApp message to pros 234-915-9242. Nine two six three. I repeat, plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three is to help you in your newfound faith to remain altogether a disciple, altogether. An actual disciple. Those who are you didn't give your life to them. Maybe you are an old believer. Begin to consecrate. Telling the Lord, help me. Give me grace to remain altogether a Christian till the rapture day. Till that day. Till that day. You are actual Christian today. Pray 
that God will help you until that day you remain a Christian. And for those who gave their lives to the Lord from Thursday to this night, remember, there is going to be Believer's Banquet, Converse Rally Believer's Banquet on Sunday, this coming Sunday, 3rd of November, 2024, in all churches, all our churches. And that time is 4 p.m. Sunday, 3rd of November, 4 p.m. And for those who gave their life online, there is going to be online banquet too, the same Sunday, by 4 p.m. More details will be sent to you. Please cancel us. Please be with them. Make sure that all that gave their lives get your attention. After they fill the form, you give them the Converse package. Make sure that nobody is neglected. And do not return to your seat after counseling. Remain with the people so that you can be able to help them after the prayer of miracle. Check yourself. Please begin to consecrate to the Lord. Father, help me to remain all together. All together, a disciple, a Christian, not almost, actual, real believer, serving the Lord with all your heart. Cancel us, please. Remain with the paper. There is no need of returning to your seat. Attend to those who have not been attended to at the far back. Make sure you get to them under the pavilion over there, under the language, uh, you know, section, go there too. Let's give attention and let us make sure that we write clearly and cross-check the address, make sure it's actual. Then the phone number, let it be correct, phone number 11 digit. Let's be thorough. Those who gave their life to Christ and you have not been attended to, please, you raise your hand and you beckon on the counselors. Nobody should be negated. We want to be all together, actual Christian. Give us the true detail about you. And as you receive the convert package containing the pastor's letter, read through prayerfully. Then the various material that are there, the book, study it with your Bible. Read it very well and pray, consecrate, ask for more grace to remain actual believer, altogether believer to the end. Let's check up how far we've gone. Counselors, if you are finished at the back, counselors at the very back, if you are true, let the supervisor there wave the flag and let us see. Okay? They are still on. Please, let's be fast and let's also be thorough. Not just fast and uh, not get the correct thing. To my left, over here, if you are true, want the supervisor, the counselor, to, I mean, uh, the person in charge to raise the flag if you are true. And make sure after filling the card, please give it back to the supervisor so that it can be corrected and then sorted out. Keep praying, those who are not Receiving attention from counselors, keep praying, telling the Lord, help me. 
Give me your grace, sufficient grace, to remain altogether a Christian. Till that day, the day of the rapture, till that day when the Lord will come for me, help me to remain altogether a Christian. Pray. We need grace. You cannot do it by your power and strength. From my right over here, are we true with counseling? If you are true, let me see your flag, supervisor. Okay, I've not seen any flag yet. Please, let's be thorough and let us ensure that thorough job is done. At the middle over here, please, if you are still counseling, let's Esting up. Actual Christian. Actual believer. Actual child of God. Lord, give me grace to remain actual Christian. Even if, if you didn't stand up, but you are not actually a Christian, you are all together, why not consecrate and say, Lord... I don't want to continue living in hypocrisy. Help me. If you are true, please raise your flag. Okay, I see the person at the middle, they are true. Okay, the person by my left. What about the far back? Okay, I can see the one at the far back. Thomas, okay, I can see, I think we are true. Shall we be on our feet now? As we welcome the servant of the Lord, as he prays for us. Amen. Final day miracle. And everything that God has not planted in your body, this final day will be rooted out. Somebody shout, rooted out. All together, every sickness, every demonic attack and affliction, everything you suffer, everything all together cancelled in Jesus' name. Now, you must also have the final day action to your faith. Don't, don't let your faith lie down there dormant. Wake it up. I said, wake it up. Yeah. And you put action to your faith. And what you couldn't do before, tonight, final day miracle, you will do it. Healing for me. For me. for me, all together for me, <laughs> be it done in your life in Jesus' name. You raise up your hand, raise up your hand, and lay the hand, the other hand, in the place where you have the challenge. And you're telling that thing in your mind, today's your final day, you will not remain here. The Lord will approach everything out of your life. You are healed. I am healed. I am delivered. I am set free. The Lord is ready now. Everything is going to approach it out of your life. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this final day. We thank you for this day of power. This day of miracle, this day of healing, this day of deliverance. Come in your mighty force and Lord drive out every seed you have not planted in the bodies of your people in Jesus' name. We know you can do it. We know you will do it. And tonight will be the night of great miracle for every one of your children in Jesus' name. And I pray for you in particular, the sickness from your head to your tummy, to your feet, to your blood system, all sickness. 
altogether removed and healed out of your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Satan, pack your load and go. Yeah. Insanity, pack your load and go. Yeah. Madness, pack your load and go. Yeah. We give you this authoritative declaration. Final moment. Go in Jesus' name. Eyes, this final day, there will be sight for the blind. Glaucoma, vanish away. Cataract, vanish away. Deepness of sight, come out in Jesus' name. Everything like bandage that bound your sight, that bandage now is removed. Yeah. Your eyes are healed. Yeah. You can now see as you open your eyes, you will see clear well in Jesus' name. Yeah. Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Yeah. All the deafness vanish away. Dumbness vanish away. Hear with your ears right now. Speak out from your mouth right now. Lord, I pray for the people that have any swelling goiter. This is your final day there. Goiter, come out in Jesus' name. Fibroid, hernia, seized. Come out in Jesus' name. Yes. Elephantiasis swelling in the leg, swelling in a part, enlarged swelling in the head, and swelling heart. The Lord is touching you now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Yes. And those who have had malaria, typhoid, and urinating, urinating all the time, diabetes, healing is sent to your body right now. Yeah. Be healed in Jesus' name. Yeah. High blood pressure, you are healed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Cancer patients there, the Lord says your cancer is healed. Yeah. Cancer be removed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Also, you're healed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hotness heats every part of the body. And the dizziness, as if when you stand, you'll fall down. I pray, miracle, yeah. healing, yeah. deliverance yeah. upon your life now in Jesus' name. Yeah. Lord, here at the Alpha location, there, online, everywhere, I pray everything the Lord has not planted in your body. Be uprooted right now in Jesus' name. Yeah. The Lord add healthy years to your life. Yeah. The Lord make you healthy and sound. Yeah. And the Lord make you do whatever you could not do before. He has made you whole. Yeah. You are healed. Yeah. I am healed. Yeah. You are delivered. Yeah. I am delivered. Yeah. You have your miracle now. Yeah. I have my miracle now. Confirmation in your life. Yeah. All together, healing, deliverance, recovery in your life. Yeah. It is done. Yeah. Where? It is done. Yeah. Where? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord has done it. The Lord has done it. The Lord has done it. Don't stay in that wheelchair. Put action to your faith. 
Don't keep on holding those crutches. Give action to your faith. Don't keep on closing your eyes. Open your eyes and see. Give action to your faith. And if anybody is deaf and dumb there, speak to them. Put action to your faith. Right, left, center, at the back, online, miracle everywhere. Yeah.